solo females stay safe on the road by themselves? Do we date? How do we make money? And what do our parents think of us? Well, we're gonna answer all of your hot button questions on this episode, and I'm not the only crazy lady on the road by myself. I've got my friends joining me this episode. Hey guys and gals, welcome back. I hope your week was well and that you liked my maintenance video. I know some of you could not believe the amount that we spend on our sprinters to maintain them. So last Sunday I asked you, what do you want to see from our van life gathering? Right now we're at Fiesta Island in San Diego. Hi, I'm Sydney or Divine on the Road on Instagram or divineontheroad.com. Hi, I'm Sloan and it's Sloan Dog with three Gs on Instagram. Sloan is just starting in her sprinter. However, it's not her first rodeo. So can you give us a little background? I am a backpacker, camper, and I was doing part-time living inside my Jeep. So the one thing I had in my Jeep that really bothered me was I didn't have a kitchen or anywhere to go to a bath, go to the bathroom. So that kind of initiated my jump into the van world. So I lived in a Sprinter with a boyfriend for about eight months before we broke up and I ended up getting my second van, which is a Ford Transit this time. How did you have the strength? Why did you continue carrying on after? I kind of was the force behind doing it in the first place. I think that my boyfriend really was passionate about it, but I was like consumed by everything van life. So when we broke up, and it wasn't because of living in a van, but when that happened, I still wanted to pursue this lifestyle. Like I was still super passionate about it. I was not ready to be done at all. I mean, I was a little nervous, but I think I've always just had a type of personality where like I jump into things full force. Like I, me too. if I'm super passionate about something, like fear has not ever been a thing that was gonna hold me back. I wanted advice, but I would, I didn't really need anybody to like hardcore convince me because I, I thought I was gonna do it regardless. We have this passion and conviction and determination. We believe in ourselves. Yeah, right. We know we can do this, oh, we're the fearless. There's a lot of women who reach out and they've been back and forth and considering van life for a couple of years and they're not really sure. And I always like try my my very best to help them out and stuff but the reality is that a lot of them don't ever end up doing it because they they don't have that in like in their gut fire. it's just not this like yeah it's there's, there's no fire there a lot like, of because us, i never doubted it and a lot of us let the fear of the the failure of it or not enjoying van life hold us back from making that yeah. initial or what? the logistics yeah it's 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 daunting it's beautiful it's a great dream but it's not in reality it's not easy it's not an easy decision to make i decided to make the transition to van life because I had family circumstances going on and I realized that life is extremely short mm -hmm. and I did not want to get to the end of my life and not know if I was going to have good health or what my life circumstances was yeah. going to be like and I had a rude awakening that I needed to live for my life right here right now because I honestly don't know if I will have it tomorrow. My family loves yeah. me 100% they give me all the support in the world and they love what I do and they want to see me happy. The biggest thing they always tell me is, I want to see you happy. So they support my my journey to be happy. However, their idea would be, go, go get married, go get a good job that you can yeah. have a retirement and you'll have good health care and you'll have all the things that we're, we're bred to have that is the standard American dream that you should have. My parents have always been very supportive of me as well, um, but mine is more along the lines of like, it, there comes a time where you cannot live your adult life for your parents still, and so I'm 23, and the reality of that is that yes, they're very paranoid, but I'm I'm an adult and I can make my own decisions, so they cannot necessarily stop me. I do what I can to make sure that they're not awake at night and but anxious and whatever like I text them my GPS coordinates and they know where I am at all times and I make sure to check in with them in the morning so that they know I slept through the night okay and things like that and that kind of leads us to our next question is how do we stay safe one of the biggest things I do to stay safe I have multiple friends I think five friends that are tracking me at all times yeah like on iPhones Huge. it's so easy you just share your location yeah share yeah. your location definitely your and definitely yeah the other thing I don't do, I don't share my location right when I'm there. Publicly. I don't right. publicly share, I should say, on social media. Yeah. I have tagged places, like one time I can give an example, I tagged that I was at the Mammoth Lake Hot Springs and a guy came out there. Oh. And I've had that a few times. Like I, I have people taking pictures of the van and saying, I just passed you. Or, um, right. and, and that's very endearing. Like, thank you so much. It's just, there's a flip side of that. I, I have to 
keep myself safe. So I can't Absolutely. always share my location right when I'm there. Absolutely. And I don't think there's much of a difference in posting it tomorrow. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, because then you get uh, maybe a message or two of people being like, oh, you're in my town, can we meet up? And I'm like, I'm so exactly. sorry, I'm not there anymore. Right. One of the top comments is, do you have a gun? Do you have this or that? Honestly, I would never share that. Yes. Because your yes. top line of defense is surprise. Is surprise. You don't know what I have or not. You, you know don't what? know what, and you, you never have, will. Whatever, whatever that may be, whatever makes you feel comfortable. It could be a gun, it could be a knife, it could be bear spray. Right. Taser. Anything. Tasers. Tasers. Pepper, Pepper spray, spray, bear spray. All of it. You could have all sorts of things, but it's whatever you are comfortable with that you no, you can take someone out with it. Doesn't matter what second. it is. Exactly. And you sleep next to it. You sleep next to your keys at all times. And my phone. Yes. Like I want to be able to call someone if I need to, or 911. I want to be able to grab my keys in a hurry, and I want to be able to access a weapon. You are driving around at night looking for a parking spot. Your intuition, your gut, just your eyes, like look around. You can tell if it's mm -hmm. a seedy area or not. Absolutely. If you just get that feeling, keep driving. I've driven an extra hour. Street lights are always a great thing. Look yep. for a street light in a parking lot. Like I love when there's cameras everywhere and there's signs that are saying cameras because the likelihood of someone breaking in when they know they're on camera is pretty pretty slim. How do you make money? That's another question you want to know, Sloan. I am very fortunate where I have a remote job and I do sales. So I actually sell fiberglass insulation. So the insulation that is inside my vans, I actually sell that. <laughs> That's so, good. It's great publicity. <laughs> Boeing grade aircraft insulation. So that's what I do for a living is I sell that and I am also a wellness coach. I mean, I do affiliate marketing and advertising for my travel website and I do a little bit of like sponsored content. I freelance right here and there, but primarily it is affiliate marketing and advertising through the website. Where do you go to the bathroom? <laughs> um, well, we have toilets. In the sink. Yeah. Go in the we sink. just open the door and we just There's go. no way there's a toilet in the van. There's okay, no well, funny you say that. I mean... Did you go in the sink? I Tell me now. this in the video. Keep this in the video. I've <laughs> never, ever thing. told anyone that. <laughs> Amazing. I have Whatever. never this told anyone amazing. that. I have a portable toilet as well. I have the Thetford uh, two and a half gallon portable toilet. I have the Thetford Curve. I have the Dometic cassette toilet. I've heard mixed reviews about composting toilets and a few people that have had to do like mechanical work or they get under their van and because of where it like funnels out, it, it just reeks. Ranks. Like, yeah, that's where all the smell goes. And so I just don't ever want to deal with that. I think the yeah. portable thing is yeah. super easy for me. Being solo, I empty it like maybe once a week. But I didn't want to get the composting toilet because after I heard that you have to keep it in there, like we keep met it someone who, yeah, we, we met a woman who's had, she's been going in it for six months. And so I, her six month old yeah, waste is, is in still there. in there. And that to me was repulsing. So at, at that point I was just grossed out and I couldn't get past that. How the hell are we ever going to find a boyfriend I'm after this? <laughs> so do you date? Yes, I do date on the road. However, every man that I date must understand that I'm not staying here. I am, I am going through town. And if you're going to be okay with my lifestyle or you live a very similar lifestyle, maybe this will work. The best thing would be to date someone else that lives this same style life and you can meet up in your vehicles of choice, like whatever their vehicle is, if they drive a trailer or they have a camper, camper. Or whatever they have. Yeah. And you guys can meet up and not have to be in such a cramped Camp. spot. But you when, know. when you're editing that, zoom in on our faces. <laughs> We're like, yeah. Okay. Camper. I am not dating. I. I, I've only been on the road uh, solo for like four or five months. I got a puppy. She's a full-time job in herself. Speaking of and someone that's walking towards <laughs> the van. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, we're clear? Yeah, no, okay, perfect. Uh, personally, I'm not dating anybody. I've only been on the road solo for about four or five months and I have a puppy and she's seven months old. So she's kind of a full-time job in herself, in of herself. Um, but I am having the time of my life. I am so enjoying getting to know myself and experiencing this adventure with me and being comfortable yeah. alone. And I think in the future, maybe I'll progress to that and I will want a partner or want to introduce that into my life. But honestly, like this time, is for myself and I am enjoying that and I'm really enjoying like taking my dog on for that adventure as well. So I don't I don't find that I need it right now. So that's you kind learn of where I'm at. So much about yourself. Yeah, right. no, I think about that all the 100%. time. I'm like even things where I just didn't understand different parts of myself. Like why do I do this? Why does that make me anxious? Why do I hate that? You and know? you're able to date better right more open heartedly oh, yeah. more vulnerable absolutely because you have the clarity of who you are 
and you have the clarity of honoring yourself and what you want and what you need and yeah. and then you can mesh well with someone else absolutely in such a deeper way in such right. a deep oh i totally you experience understand that your now inner workings and what makes you tick and what things will set you off and pull you away from a relationship and you can yeah. Finally, Me mesh well with you. Not even that just to not even just tell them why it doesn't work. Right, not even just boyfriends even friends. though. My relationships, like I met Sloan at a Women on the Road gathering in November, and we've been inseparable since. And yeah. I've never had a friend who understood me so well because I never knew what I needed in a friend. It was like, Absolutely. oh, you like me, and I like you. Okay, cool. We're gonna be friends. Okay, as far as next Sunday's video, this is a little um, throwing in a wrench for you. I, starting next Thursday, am doing a 10-day silent meditation course 10 days me not talking and me meditating from 4 30 in the morning till 9 at night so the next time i see you i might be a little bit of a different person what do you want to see the next time i see you i think it will be in two weeks from now let me know in the comments below what you're thinking people really do want to get a feel for like what are you doing during your days like right. what is your Absolutely. day filled with doing you know what i mean and i yeah. think that would just be interesting for you to take anybody even if it's a boring day if it's a chore day i think it's people just don't like, understand what it takes to live in a van every right. day. Sometimes my parents the, will be like, what did you do out. today? And I'm like, you don't under, like, I know I only worked for a few hours, but like I had to go here and then I had to do this and then I had to go to do like, right. it's, it's, we have, it you have a lot day. more chores when you live in a van, like daily chores you have to do. Yeah. In a van. The next time I see you, we'll do a day in the life of me in a van. See you Sunday when I see you, 7 p.m. West Coast time. Safe travels.